Today, I'm talking about Redfin and Zillow and their estimate on your home. Is it accurate? Is it worth looking at? We're gonna look at it. My name is Brent. I'm a Washington State Certified Real Estate Appraiser and we're gonna dig into it. I get this question all the time, multiple times a week. Well, my Redfin says this, my estimate says that. Is it accurate? Well, before we dive in and determine the accuracy level of these things, first I'm gonna to explain to you how it works and why it differs from an appraisal. So Redfin and Zillow use a more quantitative approach. What that means is they're using a larger data set than, than most. And right off the bat, that sounds like, well, man, more data equals better. Well, not always, but it can, depending on how you're using it. So Redfin and Zillow use an algorithm. That's basically a fancy way of saying this big math problem where they take in all this data, put it in the computer and spit out a number, okay? It's not done by a human, it's automated and done by the computer. Now, no one outside of Redfin and Zillow really knows how the algorithm works. You know, it's best guess on, on our part. People there would know, but us and the public, we don't know exactly how it works, um, but we have pretty good guesses as to how they're using data or what data they're using. First off, they're gonna look at the market and define the market area for your home. What market and what area are the buyers that would buy your home? What other areas are they gonna buy in? And that is kind of the, the loose market area. There's probably a tight market area that is your immediate neighborhood and then expand out to other market areas. Then what they're gonna do is find homes that have sold um, within the last 90 days three months, six months, however their algorithm takes it, and probably weight them differently. So they're gonna weight a recent sale probably heavier than they are an older sale. So then they're gonna take those sales and parse them down even further and try to come up with a price per square foot. So if your homes are selling about $300 um, per square foot, then they're gonna attach that to the square footage of your home. Now it doesn't end there. There's lots of other amenities that um, you have to consider when considering a value. Do you have a view? What's your lot size? Do you have a small lot? Do you have a large lot? Um, do you have a barn? Are you on the water? Um, all those different amenities play into it and Zillow and Redfin, they're gonna attach a price probably to each of those amenities based on the data that's in the area um, and then attach that value to your home. They're also gonna look at listing history. Did you list the home and it didn't sell? Or did the home list and it sold and what price? They're gonna use that history and to input into the price. They're also gonna base the price on the known condition and quality of the house. So if it was recently updated, you know, it might not factor in, but they're gonna go with the known uh, amenities of the home, square footage. So if you've added on, it's probably not gonna be accurate. Um, what it knows for barns and shops and views. And if it doesn't know it, it can't value it. So it's gonna go with what it knows. Now this is in contrast to what an appraiser is gonna do, which is more of a qualitative approach. We're gonna take four to seven sales. Now I'm simplifying this a little bit, but we're gonna take four to seven sales uh, that are the most similar to your house. So as recent sales as we can find that are in the same neighborhood, that are the same style. So this is one thing that I think varies from us to uh, a Redfin and Zillow, is we're gonna try to find the same st style. If you're a split entry, we're gonna try to find split entries. If it's a Craftsman, we're gonna try to find Craftsman. If it's um, a Tudor or a Rambler, we're gonna try to find that same style, which um, can differ in price per square foot. Different styles can differ in that, in that price per square foot. And uh, Redfin and Zillow, I don't feel like um, put as much weight on that as an appraiser would. So we're gonna take those, the best sales we can find, and compare them to those. Whereas the Redfin and Zillow, I think are, are including a lot more sales that might not be as similar to your house. So now that we kinda of know how it works um, very loosely uh, in a very simplified version, we're gonna look at um, how accurate is it. And in my opinion, and from what I've seen, I think Redfin and Zillow can be accurate in very certain circumstances, and, and other circumstances can be, can be wildly off. So what are the strengths of this quantitative approach and algorithm uh, method that Redfin and Zillow use? It's gonna have a strength in homes that are kind of cookie cutter. Um, if you have a lot of homes that are the same 
and that have recently sold, that's probably gonna be pretty accurate. Um, when you have that much data of similar data, um, it's, it just has a lot to pull from and it's just gonna be a, a more accurate valuation. If your lot size is very similar to the neighborhood, um, if the condition and quality is very similar to all the sales in the neighborhood, that's just gonna lead to being more accurate. The more your home differs from the market area that you're in, the less accurate it's probably gonna be. So do you have a five acre lot amongst homes that um, are on posted size or normal, more typical lot sizes? Do you have a view and there's no other view homes that have sold? Do you have a pool and nobody else has a pool? Um, are you waterfront and nobody else has waterfront? Now, you could be waterfront where there's a lot of waterfront sales and it might seem like it might be less accurate, but because there's a lot of sales on the waterfront, it's probably gonna be pretty accurate. Other times I see it not be as accurate is um, when you have an ADU or detached ADU, an accessory dwelling unit, or a mother-in-law unit in the basement. Those are times where I've seen it kind of not be as accurate as, you, as you'd want. Now, if you've recently added on square footage or gutted the house and have all new kitchen and bathrooms and floors and Redfin or Zillow doesn't know that, it's not gonna be accurate. It's gonna be the old valuation. So, can you trust it? Well, you gotta really look at the lens um, like of your home through the filter that I just kind of talked about. How recently was it updated? Is, does Redfin have the most relevant information? Is it similar to other homes in the neighborhood that have been selling? So if that's the case, then yeah, I would probably say it's a good starting point. If not, it could be wildly off. I just did a home where Redfin and Zillow were way, way far apart. I mean, wildly far apart, and I came in even higher than both of those had it. And the, accurate, the information they had seemed to be accurate. They seemed to have all the amenities, but for some reason, uh, the algorithms just weren't um, painting the right picture or valuing. It had an ADU and a mother-in-law, so I think it just had trouble with the two of those and attaching the correct value. So yes, I think Redfin and Zillow is a great place to start when wanting to know the value of your home. But if you really wanna know, talk to your agent, get an appraiser if you really want to know that specific value. But I think Redfin Zillow is a good place to start. If you have any questions that I have, ne that I have not answered, let me know in the comments. I'd be glad to answer them. Even if it's about a different topic, let me know if there's a topic you want me to cover.